Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars and you're watching another episode of From the Luthiers Workbench. In this episode, I'm going to be picking up where I left off in the last episode, which was part five of my Highline bass guitar build. And in that episode, I had focused on getting the neck ready uh, for what will be coming pretty soon, and that is the application of final finish. And what I'm going to do in this episode, part six, is I'm going to do the same kind of thing to the body of the guitar. I'm going to sand it and get it fully uh, prepared for uh, stain, grain filling, and then the final clear coat, um, which I'll be applying to both the body and the neck. So there's a lot of stuff I've got to cover in this episode. And uh, without delay, let's get started. Since my CNC machine only has three axes, uh, I'm going to have to drill the holes for the jack using uh, the tried and true method of uh, using a power drill and a couple of different bits. And here I'm starting the hole with a Forstner bit. Then I continue with a brad point bit to hog out most of the wood. And then I'll finish with that Forstner bit, drilling it uh, all the way into the control cavity. For the neck mounting bolts, uh, I could have easily drilled those holes into the neck with my CNC machine, but I prefer to do it manually after I have fit the neck into the body. And then I'll drill the pilot holes into the neck heel using my drill press and about an eighth inch drill bit. That'll be large enough to accommodate uh, the number eight wood screws that I'll be using to attach the neck to the body. To prep the body for finish, I'm going to have to do a lot of sanding just like I did with the neck. And what I'll do is I'll use my random orbital sander with a 220 grit sanding disc. And I'll just spend a little bit of time sanding over the entire surface. Now I'll do the majority of my sanding using the random orbital sander because it's faster and when used properly with good quality sanding abrasives, I can get a really nice uh, surface finish. However, um, there are some areas that are going to be kind of difficult to get to, like uh, some of those cutaways. And to do that, I'm going to have to uh, resort to using uh, my oscillating spindle sander and a lot of hand sanding as well. Now I'm a real stickler for consistency in my transition edges and here you can see where the vertical surface meets the angled surface and it's kind of wavy. So what I need to do is do quite a bit of hand sanding to make sure that that um, uh, transition edge is consistent. Now in truth I don't think there's really any art to hand sanding. I think really more than anything it just requires patience and the willingness to continue sanding until you've achieved perfection. And sometimes that means having to set it down and walk away for a while and kind of recharge your batteries before you go back to it. But having that desire to um, achieve perfection is what's going to make the difference in the overall quality of the finish. Okay, hold on a second. Before I start to apply the finish, I feel compelled to kind of explain my finishing schedule. And what I'm gonna be doing is I will be applying uh, water-based products from start to finish. And all the products that I use are supplied by Crystal Lac. And I've talked about their products before, so if you wanna learn more about how I use them, you can um, uh, check out uh, videos that I've done before. In fact, I'll post a link up here to one in particular that uh, it gives you a lot of information about their products and how I use them. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be applying um, these products to both the body and the neck. And the technique is pretty much the same uh, for both. However, there's going to be a slight difference. Um, with the neck, I'm only going to be applying sanding sealer followed by the clear coats, because that's all I need to do. With the body, however, I'm going to be applying a couple of different 
tinted uh, stains that I'm going to mix up using Crystal Lax Craftneak pigments mixed into their bright tone instrument finish. And I'm going to be doing a, a black stain which will pop the grain and um, the pores in the wood. Then I'm going to sand that back and apply a, it's sort of a red brown stain that I'm mixing up. And once that's done, I'll fill the grain so that the surface is level and then start applying my clear coats. So uh, let's head out to the shop and I'll, I'll show you more about what I'm talking about. Both the neck and the body are going to get a coat of my water-based uh, sanding sealer. And this is mainly just to prep the wood for uh, the next steps in the finishing process. And after spraying a seal coat on the neck, I'm going to set it aside for the time being and focus on applying finish to the body. The seal coat that I sprayed earlier is really intended to help promote the consistent absorption of the color stains that I'm going to be applying. So before I can actually start to apply the stain, I need to sand off the excess from the surface while leaving the sealer in the uh, open end grain. Now the first color I'm going to apply is a black stain and I basically created this by mixing uh, black Craftneek pigment into clear um, Crystal Lac bright tone instrument finish. So it creates a stain that will penetrate into the wood. However, because it's mixed into bright tone, um, the bright tone will act as a binder and will lock it into place so I don't have to worry about the the dye coming up later on as I handle the instrument. But the purpose of the black is to allow it to penetrate into the grain to make it stand out. After applying that black dye stain, I'll let it dry for just a short period, maybe 30 minutes or so. And then I'm going to come back with some synthetic steel wool and rub it with water. And what this does is it removes it from the surface while leaving the black in the grain and pores. I'll work in sections and before they have a chance to dry, I'll wipe the surface down with a clean paper towel to remove as much of that excess black as possible. And since I'm using water-based products, I can easily use a blow dryer to help speed up the drying process. To finish off the removal of the black dye, I'll use some 400 grit sandpaper and just lightly sand over the entire surface. After sanding off uh, that remaining excess black, I can then up start applying my second color. And this is actually the main color. And it's basically mixed up the same way as that um, black color was mixed up. I'm using Crystal Lax Bright Tone Instrument Finish as a base and then I'm adding a couple of drops of brown Craftneek and then a drop or two of red and yellow Craftneek. And now this is the sort of thing that you, you have to kind of experiment with the mixture uh, by testing on scrap to figure out exactly what ratio to use to get the color you want. But I'll apply this over the entire surface of the guitar and then let it dry. The nice thing about using this type of uh, tinted um, dye stain is that uh, there's a couple of ways I can apply it. I can either wipe it on as, as you see me doing here, or I can load up my spray gun and spray it on. And it just really depends on the uh, type of uh, result that I want from the finish. And in this case, I wanted kind of a hand applied look. So if I wanted a more consistent look, I would probably just um, opt for spraying it onto the surface. After I've finished applying the color, I'll hang it up and let it dry for about 24 hours. Now even though the color is pretty well locked in, I'm going to go ahead and spray a coat of sanding sealer to act as a barrier to protect the color during the, uh, the next step in the process. And that next step involves 
uh, filling the grain and pores. And this is an optional step. It's not something you absolutely have to do, but I like the way it makes the guitar look. And the product I'm using is Crystal Lax water-based grain filler. And I'll apply it as thin as possible. And typically I'll apply two, three, maybe even four coats to get the grain filled. And once I'm satisfied that the grain is uh, 90 to 100% filled, I'll lightly sand the surface with some 400 grit and get it ready for the next step. And as you can see, the surface doesn't look so good. And fortunately, that's only temporary. To make sure that the color is going to be as consistent across the entire surface as possible, I'm going to apply a second application of my uh, reddish brown dye stain. Exactly the same product I used before. And now I'm ready to begin applying my uh, final clear coats. And what I'm going to be using here is uh, Crystal X Bright Tone Instrument Finish. And I'll probably spray about eight coats total on both the body and the neck. I'll treat the neck the same way as I did the body by spraying a total of eight coats of my Crystal Lac finish. And you'll notice that I'm not only spraying the back of the neck, but I'm also spraying the fretboard. And you're probably wondering why I'm doing this with the frets in place. Well, it's easy to deal with that because this finish isn't going to stick to the stainless steel frets. So I can simply rub that finish off with some synthetic steel wool. After spraying the fifth coat, I let the finish dry overnight. Then I proceeded with a light session of level sanding using 800 grit sandpaper. The goal with uh, level sanding at this point is to reduce the high spots in the finish and make the surface as smooth as possible before I spray my three final coats. That, in turn, will reduce the amount of work that I'm going to have to do later on. And as you can see, a lot of the work has to be done very carefully by hand to avoid sanding through to the underlying finish. The neck got the same leveling treatment with 800 grit sandpaper. The one major difference is the fretboard takes a little bit of extra work. After I had finished level sanding with the 800 grit, I was ready to spray my final three coats. However, before I could do that, I had to decide on what kind of sheen that I wanted for this particular guitar. Well, I ended up opting for matte. Uh, matte finishes are so easy to apply because all you've got to do is spray them on and let them dry. There's no need to do any level sanding, nor do you have to buff it, of course. And so I went ahead and sprayed my final three coats on the body and did the same thing with the neck as well. And then once that final coat had been sprayed, both the body and the neck were hung up and allowed to cure, which will take about a week. All right, guys, well, it looks like I've run out of time for this episode. In the next episode, which will be part seven of this build, uh, I hope to begin assembly, and we'll see how, how it all turns out. Um, but in the meantime, I hope that you have a great weekend, a great week ahead. And, you know, as always, uh, give me a thumbs up, leave comments below. I'll try to answer any questions you might have. And if you don't already subscribe, click that subscribe button. And when you do so, you'll see that little bell icon. Click it and you'll get notifications every time I post a new video. And uh, for those of you who are subscribers, you know that all the videos that I produce are geared entirely towards uh, projects like this, building guitars and uh, nothing else. So um, until the next episode, take care 
and we'll see you soon.